Good morning and welcome to It Matters. Today we have five wonderful pastors giving us a message on We Are Overcomers. I love this message today. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Gregory Williams. Pastor Williams, tell us about your ministry. We're the Holy Faith Missionary Baptist Church in the great city of Miami Gardens. Our service is on Sunday at 11 a.m. We want you to come out and enjoy the service and we want you to smile for a while. Look forward to seeing you in the place. Thank you, Pastor. We're looking forward to your word today. God bless you. Thank you, Joseph. Good morning. It's a blessing to be with you this morning. We got a word from the Lord for you. God has a blessing for you. In the book of Revelations, Revelation, the second chapter and verse seven, these familiar words are there. It says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I want to talk to you for a moment about we are overcomers. I want you to know today you are a overcomer. Speak to yourself, speak to your spirit, speak to your family, speak to everyone that you know and tell them you're an overcomer through the blood of Jesus. Well, when you think about the word overcoming, it comes from the Greek word niko, uh, to endure, to achieve victory. In fact, the word comes from Nike, which comes from the Greek word. It talks about, you know, the, the, the advertising, uh, the sneaker company, Nike, uh, just do it. Yes, the victory. Uh, it's the whole idea that you're victorious when you think about overcoming. And so when we think about overcoming, Jesus specifically talks about it 17 times in the book of Revelation. It's Christ's primary message to us today to endure. And he's speaking to the seven churches. Not only is he speaking to those seven churches, but he's also speaking to our contemporary situation today. Christ wants you to know, in spite of all that you do, because of his power and because of his blood, and most important, because of his love, you can be overcoming. So I want you to know you have victory in Christ. He speaks about the seven rewards that you shall have. And I just want to elaborate on two of them. One of them, he says that you will have, you will have a right to the tree of life. He's speaking about your eternal destiny, that your future is bright. In fact, I want to let you know that your future is so bright, it's going to blind you. I want you to know that God says, even after you leave this world, that he has a special place for you. He also says the second thing is that you're going to have an opportunity to sit with him on the right hand of the Father. Isn't that good to know that your future is already set? And so I want you to know, in spite of what you may be going through, Christ says you're an overcomer. And if God says it, that settles it. I don't care what the enemy may tell you. I don't care what anybody may speak to you and say something differently. If Christ says you'll overcome it, you ought to be able to believe it. Because if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? And so he's more than all that are against you. And so I want you to know today that the primary message for Christ for the, from, from those to those churches and to you today is that you can make it and he's going to see you through. Secondly, Christ's primary mission, your, uh, your, your primary mission is this, to, that you ought to hear the word of God. That's your mission, that you may hear the word. There's, there is victory in hearing the word. It's one thing about knowing the word, and it's the one thing about saying the word, but hearing what Christ is saying to the church. Hearing is victory, for the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and that's hearing the word of God. So there's two things we're dealing with. You have to hear the word, and you have to heed the word. We have to hear the word and heed the word. Heeding, it means that you put your feet to your faith. Heeding means that you're not just listeners of the word, but you're doers of the word. Act, in other words, the word is activating in your, in your life. And so that's imperative, that you're walking in what you're hearing, that you're practitioners of the word. It's not just information, but it's application. You're applying it to your daily life before everybody. The Bible says that we are the light of the world, the city that sits upon the hill. There are people that are watching you. So everything that you do is in important because they're going to mimic your behavior. And so you have to live a life that when others see you, that they know without a doubt, oh, I remember how they used to be, but they're no longer that way. Why? Because they're overcomers. I want you to know today, and I want to encourage you, 
you may have a challenge, you may have an addiction, you may be going through a difficult thing that you can't seem to shake, but God says you're an overcomer. So keep speaking that because there's power in your words. I don't care if it's a drug addiction. I don't care it may be a, a whatever, any sin or any vice that you may be going through. God says that you're an overcomer. If God says you're an overcomer, I believe it, that settle it, and in the name of Jesus, if you can overcome through Christ, if you trust in him and lead not to your own understanding, in all that ways, if you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. So be blessed today and continue to speak to your spirit and says, I am an overcomer through Christ today and because it matters. I'm Pastor Greg Williams of the Holy Faith Missionary Baptist Church. We welcome you to come and to be part of our great fellowship because we want you to smile for a while. Be blessed. Today's topic, We Are Overcomers, is such a passion, a passionate topic in my heart because my life has been about overcoming. I love challenges. There was a time in my life where I didn't love them as much as I did today. I almost had to step back from them and question myself. But when I found a little seed inside myself, the seed of faith where I knew I had a partner in this process, there wasn't a challenge in this world that could ever slow me down. I hope that seed grows inside of you. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Stephen Stewart. Pastor Stewart, please tell us about your ministry. Uh, I pastor the first Seventh-day Adventist Church of West Palm Beach, Florida. We're located at uh, 6300 Summit Boulevard. Pastor, what time is your service? Uh, we have services on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. and also on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Thank you, Pastor. We're looking forward to your word. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to share a thought uh, with you as we continue on the theme, We Are Overcomers. Uh, in the Gospel according to Mark in chapter 16, verses 32 and 33, Jesus spoke the following words to his disciples. Indeed, the hour is coming, he said. Yes, has now come that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus, looking ahead to the time of his sufferings, tells his closest friends, his disciples, that they would desert him, that they would leave him alone to suffer. But friends uh, may uh, desert you, followers may leave you, uh, Friends will, uh, would abandon him, but he would not be alone because his heavenly Father would be with him. The presence of God would be with him, and in that, he would find comfort. He would find peace. And he shares, Jesus shares these words with his disciples and us today in order to offer us the same peace. But the peace, the peace that Jesus offers is not a peace that comes from a life free of troubles and trials. As a matter of fact, he tells them that in the world, you will have tribulation. As you, as you begin this day, there is no guarantee that your day will be free of difficulties. Rather, you might as well expect troubles because in this world, you will have tribulation. Your car may not start up today. Uh, you may be late for work due to heavy traffic. Uh, someone may get on your last nerves you might as well expect something to go wrong today. But Jesus encourages us to be of good cheer because in spite of the troubles, in spite of the troubles that this world has to offer, he has overcome the world. And because he has overcome the world, you too, we can also overcome. We can have the peace that Jesus offers in spite of the problems that we face. You know, I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the story of Jesus and his disciples as they crossed over the Sea of Galilee in the book of Mark chapter 4. Uh, an unexpected storm came upon them suddenly and they were, as they were in the boat. It was Jesus' uh, suggestion that they cross over the sea together. And interestingly, uh, he did not promise them that the ride would be smooth. As a matter of fact, Jesus was with them in the boat, but the Bible tells us that he was sleeping in the rear of the boat. As they struggled unsuccessfully to navigate the boat, they finally gave up and frantically awoke Jesus out of his sleep. Master, carest thou not that we perish, they said. 
it seems to them that Jesus was leaving them to die, uh, that Jesus was sleeping on the job, that he would not be there to save them. But what they did not understand was that Jesus was resting because he knew that he was in the care of his heavenly Father, in spite of being in the middle of a storm. Because the heavenly Father's presence was with Jesus, he could rest in the midst of that storm. Uh, they woke him up, and he said to the winds and the waves, Peace! be still. And the wind ceased and the waves uh, was, was calm. Jesus overcame the elements of that great storm and his disciples and he were able to cross over to, to the other side safely. Today you may experience an unexpected storm but keep in mind that Jesus never promised us smooth sailing. He never promised a life without storms. Uh, uh, storms may come your way, but even in the midst of storms, you can find peace because Jesus overcame the storms of this world. And if he overcame, he promises us that we can overcome as well. And so because of the presence of Jesus today, because of the presence of Jesus in our lives, we can be overcomers. Uh, my goal, my, my, my prayer for you today is that you would leave and go with Jesus. Make sure that you are in the presence of Jesus today because where Jesus is, there is overcoming power. Even though we may go through storms, in spite of the troubles that you will face today, if the presence of Jesus is with you, you can overcome. May God bless you today as you go in peace. My name is Stephen Stewart. I pastor the First Seventh-day Adventist Church of West Palm Beach, Florida. We look forward to seeing you and, and, and fellowshipping with you Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. May God bless you today as you travel in peace. Life is full of challenges, this is true. As you become an overcomer, those challenges almost become a pleasure in your life. May you find the silver lining in any cloud that you're going through. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Timothy Bennett. Pastor Bennett, please share your ministry with us. Uh, my name is Timothy Bennett. I pastor New Beginnings Christian Faith Center over in uh, Miramar, Florida. We meet at the Hilton Garden Inn every Sunday at 11, and every Tuesday night we have Bible study. Thank you, Pastor. We're looking forward to your word today. Bless you. Good evening. Welcome to It Matters. Again, my name is Pastor Timothy Bennett, and I'm the pastor of New Beginnings Christian Faith Center in Miramar, Florida. And I'm going to be speaking from the subject today, because you are an overcomer. And you don't have to take my word for it. Scripture says it right here. 1 John 5 and 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So if you don't get excited about anything else today, if you don't get excited about anything else this month or the rest of this year, certainly you're going to get excited about the fact that God has called you an overcomer and that God cannot lie. It's a known fact that your very mind and my very mind can imprison us. It's also a known fact that we determine what we feed our mind. So we can feed our mind belief or we can feed it doubt. We can feed our mind faith or we can feed our minds fear. We can feed our mind God's word, or we can feed our mind man's opinion. But at the end of the day, the reality is we feed our mind, therefore we choose our mind. This is why it's very important. This is why it's so essential. I would even say, man, it's critical that we guard our minds because whatever we feed our minds will cause us eventually to act. In fact, Scripture says whatever we think we are, we are. Overcomers don't overcome because they allow the world to define them. Overcomers overcome because they allow God's word to define them. And that's a big difference. God tells us over and over and over in the Bible, throughout the scripture, in spite of what it looks like, in spite of what's going on around you, God calls you an overcomer. And man, that's enough again to get excited about Jesus. Jesus never said that it was going to be easy following him, but he did say this. He said, those of us that, that are born of his spirit would be able to overcome the world, and we got to always remember that whatever God says is true, it is true. Whether we see it with our natural eyes, whether we feel like it, whatever God says is true, it's true. 
So very quick, I got two quick principles I want to share with you, and then we out. Number one, in order to overcome your present condition, you got to change the way that you think. You cannot go into a new situation with an old frame of mind. You cannot afford to let others define who you are in the Lord. You got to get in God's word and allow God to define who you are. So look here, never let what others think of, think of you change your opinion of yourself. Allow the word of God to define you because guess what? Because we are overcomers, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because we are overcomers, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It didn't say it, shall, it wouldn't be formed, it said it wouldn't prosper. Because we are overcomers, guess what? We are kings and we are kings. We are kings and we are queens. We are royal priesthood. We are overcomers. So our job is to believe that, to proceed, and to overcome. That takes us, that transcends us into our second principle of the day. The second principle is you will never, you will never leave where you are until you decide where you'd rather be. Never gonna leave where you are until you decide where you'd rather be. And as soon as you decide where you'd rather be, there's some things you gotta overcome. There's some people you got to overcome. There's some relationships you got to overcome. There's some situations you got to overcome. But remember now, God called you an overcomer. Therefore, you can overcome it. Look, John uses this phrase, born of God, seven times in this epistle, and he describes the birthmarks of believers. Here's what John says we are. He says we practice righteousness. He says we don't practice sin. He said we love our brothers and sisters, and even John brings it home. And he said we overcome the world. Man, that's enough to get excited about. We overcome the world. So Christians are not supposed to love the world. We're supposed to love God. We're supposed to not belong to the world. We belong to God. We don't yield to the world. We yield to God. And we always remember that we overcome the world. And guess what? We overcome the devil himself. Man, somebody ought to shout hallelujah with that. We overcome the devil himself. But now here's the key. We don't overcome in our power. We overcome in God's power in God's strength. So the whole key is you got to get in the Word of God, you got to read the Word of God, find out what God says, find out what He calls you, and then act like it. He calls you a man of God, act like a man of God. He tells you you can do all things, act like you can do all things. He tells you you're a royal priesthood, act like you're a royal priesthood. He tells you that you're an overcomer, so you got to act like you overcome. Praise the God, praise the Lord. I like to say again that I'm very, very grateful for being here. Uh, Pastor New Beginners Christian Faith Center. Again, my name is Timothy Bennett. I'm an overcomer. So are you. Act like it. At your deepest level, you know who you are. You are absolutely an overcomer. And I want you to know you're not alone. You have some great friends that you've met on this show. Come out and fellowship with us. We will build the confidence that you need. And if you're already confident, come share it because we need you. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Conrad Del Torres. Pastor Del Torres, please tell us about your ministry. Man, I tell you what, Fusion Miami Church, we're a bunch of nobodies trying to tell anybody about somebody, and that somebody's Jesus. Come, we're right next to South Dade High School in Homestead, Florida on 288th Street, FusionMiamiChurch.com. Come check it out. Thank you, Pastor. Can't wait to hear your word. Amen, amen, amen. Man, what a beautiful name for this, this program. It matters, it matters. It matters because Jesus matters. It matters because the only thing that matters is that if you have life in you. I told you a couple of days ago while I was here in this program that not everybody who professes Christ possesses him, that you have to receive him. As a matter of fact, 1 John, or John chapter 1, verse 12 says, For as many blue people that receive my red spirit. Now we're talking about overcomers. Can I tell you something, beloved? You cannot be an overcomer until you first receive Jesus. As a matter of fact, 1 John 5, verse 4 says this, that for whoever is born of God, it is he who overcomes the world. Uh, Paul said this in, in all his battles in the, uh, Romans chapter 7. He says, watch this now, in color. The things I want to do, I don't. The godly things I want to do, I don't. The things I don't want to do, I keep doing. Wretched man that I am. Who's going to save me from this? Uh, in chapter 8, it says, I am therefore, an, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. 
those that overcome, the reason we're called overcomers is because we didn't do anything to deserve it. We didn't do anything to get it. Jesus handed it to us, and much like he did, uh, much like Gabriel did Mary, when he even told her and picked her, and she said, let it be unto me as thou hast spoken. And she, the Holy Spirit impregnated her with the seed of God himself. And nine months later, from a blue young lady comes out another one of these things. A man God, a God man. And the Bible tells us, you want to be an overcomer? The first thing you need to do is receive Jesus. That's how you overcome. And greater is he who is in you than anything the world might bring to you. You want to be an overcomer? Work out your salvation. Not for your salvation. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Man, hang on to his hand and live out that thing which is inside you. Listen, let him strip you. Let him do divine surgery. Let him start tearing things from you. The more you thin out the blue, the more of red can be seen through you. The more a spirit can be seen through you. Beloved, you want to be an overcomer? You want to be an overcomer? Can I tell you something? David was a, a sinful man, but David was a single-hearted man. David was a single-hearted man. That's why the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. And when you receive Jesus, it's like uh, when Adam had him, it's what, like a red umbilical cord connecting him to the very spirit of God. You want to be an overcomer? I want to tell you something. You can be the best blue man that ever lived. You can give all your blue money to a blue pastor. You can be baptized in water so many times a barracuda is your best friend. Die and still go to hell. You want to be an overcomer? You need to re receive Jesus as your Savior. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is God, see, that's audible, that's, that's, that's outer, that's the, the flesh speaking. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is God and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, watch what happens, you will be saved. He will pass you from death to life. And then you can say you're an overcomer. And then you can hang on to that says, man, listen, Satan, you can sit on attack, brother. You ain't got nothing coming here. My God is in control, and greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Beloved, if you haven't done that, do it. If you haven't done that, do it. All you have to do is just admit that we need Jesus. Admit it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus and then live accordingly. God bless you. Look us up, FusionMiamiChurch.com, Fusion Miami Church, right next to South Lake High School. We love you. God bless you. We've had four great messages, and you're about to meet an amazing pastor, my friend, Pastor Kelvin Baker. Pastor Baker, please tell us about your ministry. Thank you. I'm Kelvin Baker, Senior Pastor of the Wave Fellowship Church in West Pembroke Pines. Our service on Sunday starts right at 11 a.m. Thank you, Pastor. We're looking forward to your word today. Bless you. Welcome to It Matters. As we conclude our discussion this morning on the very topic, we are overcomers. In Romans chapter 12, verse 21, we are, we are reminded from the Apostle Paul who says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. This morning, as we close out our discussion with you on this subject of overcomers, I want to first remind you that the day you surrender your life to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you join the rank of overcomers. The Bible says that we are surrounded by such a greater cloud of witnesses, those that we're overcomers are, are now looking at you and rooting you on and encouraging you to keep the faith and contend with the faith. We must recognize that God has made every believer an overcomer only through Christ. Paul wrote it and he said it like this. He says, for our sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us. Thank God for giving us a new identity as an overcomer of, of sin, of death, and hell. On August the 19th, 1979, I joined the ranks of becoming an overcomer. That all I can do right now is look back some 30 years and recognize all that God has done for me. I'm an overcomer this morning because of the, the very thing that I had overcome. And, and you can be an overcomer if you've not embraced the Lord in your life as your Savior and Lord. But the Bible continues on encouraging us as overcomers to, to trust in the Lord to, that, that, that helps you to appropriate all the aspects of your new nature to conquer any challenging circumstances, any person or any problems. You see, when, when God looks at us, he looks at us as, as spiritual beings. We, we are spiritual warriors. We are soldiers of the Lord. He's made us more than conquerors because the Lord has the ability to look ahead of time the very things that you are wrestling with right now. He brought me here this morning to remind you that you will overcome it. You will overcome it. If we stop to survey the life of the great uh, 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 Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, great overcomers throughout the Bible, but, but Paul, this apostle, he was a man who lived most of his life with Christian life attacks. He was oppressed. He was, he was threatened by all kinds of, of evil forces. But successfully, people of God, he overcame all things through Christ. And Paul wrote, he says, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Believers, the Lord uh, uh, wants us to be reminded that as we're going through many issues in life, that greater is he that is within us than he that is within this world. That whatever is before you today, you can overcome it. It's already been spoken over you. It's already been predestined over you. You are more, the Bible tells us, more than a conqueror. You've been made more than a conqueror through the blood of Jesus Christ. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. May God bless you and keep you as you continue to, to walk the walk of faith, being conquerors that God has planned for you to be. Why is this so important, people of God? Because it matters. May God bless you and bless you real good. Thank you.